keep him well. So, Paul DC here, for those of you who don't know, I'm a lead character modeler in the animation industry. And today we're going to do some sculpting. And we're going to do something a little bit different today. So, for any of you who were in the previous streams, we were working, we were working on the pumpkin. And before that, we were working on the Cluedo characters. So, I'm doing a bunch of Cluedo characters, and that's kind of what I've been working on through the streams. But today, if any of you hadn't heard already, um, Zebra streamers, we're all doing, or a bunch of us are doing a Krampus sculpt. So, I've muddled together some sort of sketch, I think, that we're going to loosely look at. Um, and... I'm going to try sculpt a Krampus. So I'm going to try and get kind of really stuck in with it today. Um, so I might not I might not be uh, as as focused on the chat and stuff as usual. I'd like to just really uh, try and focus on the sculpt for this one. Um as much as I can and hopefully get a good chunk done because we've only got two hours so hey Chris hey Alex thanks for joining Um, so yeah we've only got we don't have a whole bunch of time so I want to try get I will continue this sculpt myself after and I'll try out some renders Um, for any of you that are following me on art station and Instagram and um, you'll be able to see that but I want to try and get as much of the way done so you, so you guys can see how I approach it and uh, kind of to do that I'm gonna need to keep the head down a little bit um, where usually I try to I try to interact as much as I can with the chat, so I'll, I still will. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna just try. We're gonna be uh, kind of speed sculpting mode today, and see how much of this guy we can get done. Um. I hope you guys don't mind that. Spicer's in. Hey, Spicer. One of the other streamers. Definitely check his work out if you haven't already. Streams with the Pixelogic streamers if you haven't caught, caught his work. He did a Krampus as well. That's pretty badass. If I do so, I saw myself. Hold on, I'll listen to it some music here but I want to just lock it down a little bit so I can concentrate sweet so the idea for today is going to be to get to really focus on trying to get all the forms in as quickly as possible something cool it's a funny one to be doing for like a Christmas classic sculptor wants to do the, the scary monsters I'm gonna try I don't wanna like I'm gonna Keep it somewhat stylized, I think, but I'm kind of free flowing here. Um, so I'm kind of just let it be what it's going to be. See what comes out, I guess. 
be a concept sculpting. As I was kind of drawing them, and I just drew them this evening, actually I'm a little bit less prepared than usual because um, just being very, very busy at the, at the moment, so I haven't had too much time to sit and come up with something, and so we were just going to kind of wing it a little bit Papa Sean's in hey Sean uh, Lisa is asking hey Lisa uh, can I call out some of my brushes yeah I'll try to call out the, the brushes as I'm using them uh, a little bit so let's use a Damien standard here. And a pinch. And this is obviously just the move brush. Move brush is king. If you really wanted to, I'd say you could probably do an entire sculpt and a good one with just the move brush. And a mask, masking. They're the two, uh, the two biggies. Hey, Leonard, Leonard, saying he's struggling with proportions. Um, I said I'm not gonna spend too much time with the chat. Went straight into it, but anyway, um, proportions depends. If you mean human proportions, then obviously the the solution there is to do you know anatomy studies and there's lots of there's loads and loads of material on YouTube tutorials on uh, getting proportions right but I mean in general especially if you're doing stylized sculpts and stuff like you're looking for that balance and that kind of feeling that it's right because obviously sometimes you might have a character with a larger head or thicker forearms and hands you know Popeye style And a lot, a lot of that will just come down to exposure of both artwork and uh, how much time you spend sculpting. You know, it 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 does kind of things start to just come to you. They start to just feel right. You start to grow a kind of intuition. Um, I guess. And obviously, the longer you do it, the better you get at feeling out the the shapes and proportions by eye but um always having strong reference and so on to begin with is really important yeah just using the damien standard here Gonna drill that in a little bit See remesh for a sec. Um Mordor Kainer, the material is Zebro Clay set or four, yeah. Hang on. Alex, I love the Irish accent. Cheers, Alex. Darko's in. Hey Darko. Thanks, brother. Yeah, my design, yeah. Now I say my design, it's not exactly something I'm proud of. I literally put it together in like 
I don't know, 20 minutes or something. So I didn't get a chance to, you know, look at much reference and kind of flesh out a, a more thought out design. I just kind of... I So th there's a couple of things, like I, I was listening to a, a YouTube video on like what the Krampus is. Um, now don't ask me to cite the law, but um, he's basically the idea for those of you who are not familiar with the character or the the legend, I should say. Um, is so obviously Santi is well. I don't know the the initial origins. I don't think involved Santa Claus or anything like that, but uh, though, so basically the idea, the the modern idea at least, is that Santa brings toys to good children at Christmas, and the Krampus comes for the bad ones. Um, I'm pretty sure the idea is well, more or less that he eats them. There's some like in older folklore. There's some creepy kind of sexualized type stuff that obviously in the modern version doesn't make it in because I guess you know it's, it just doesn't really fit anymore does it And Keith, hey from Mexico, thanks for joining, buddy. Right. So I'm just gonna duplicate that, and decimate it, or sorry, zero mesh it super low, because I just need another lump of geo. So I'm just using so BHP, just using the H polish brush. I wanna figure out where the temple. So I'm going off the eyebrow there. That's just so I have something there that you know the the, the line there flows, I guess, from something. Again, it's kind of slightly made. It's essentially it's made up anatomy, but you know I'm still aware of anatomy. I'm trying to come up with something that or stuff that kind of makes sense. Uh, Alex, why do Irishmen speak differently from Englishmen yet lived in the same kingdom? We are actually on a completely different island, um, and you'd be surprised even within Ireland itself. The accents, there's a lot of different accents for such a small place. You can go south to somewhere like Cork. You have another Irishman that my accent and his accent will sound like two different languages almost. I'm not sure what I want to do with the jaw yet. Explore that in the two days you can see. Siri mesh. This guy. Crabs from Austria. Not very good. Cool. Did they? Ha is that where they have like they have like a Krampus festival or something, right? Like everyone gets dressed up like a, a Krampus, I guess. 
I've seen that somewhere. Oh, I like that, just seeing as Spicer says, every master was a disaster. The secret is practice, practice, practice. Yeah, yeah, I try to, you know, there's sometimes with some artists, and I can understand why they have like this kind of uh, facade, for uh, lack of a better word, let's say, of like um, they were born with this innate talent, but uh. You know, at one stage, I was just a teenager doing crappy drawings in my bedroom. I just liked it enough that I just kept doing the crappy drawings until they, until they stopped being crappy. Well, and then I got into sculpting. But when I say that, like the, I mean, the, Disciplines carry across. Let me know for any of you guys who've like caught the previous streams of mine and stuff. Like I know I'm probably talking more than I really planned, but um, let me know which you kind of prefer, what kind of format you prefer here. Whether me just concentrating on the sculpting is better. We used to do this thing in the previous company I worked in every week where <clears throat> it was only brief but for an hour i think i've mentioned it before on one of the streams for an hour we just have like we'd all use the same concept and um, darko used to do it with me um we'd all use the same concept and just see how much of it we could get done in an hour um proper kind of speed sculpting and uh i Although I wouldn't recommend it to beginners, because uh, essentially you're rushing the sculpt uh, when you're when you're learning. It's not really. I don't think it's such. It's, well, yeah, I wouldn't say it's really good practice. So, um, well, you know, when you have a good grip on everything, um, it can be. It can be good to kind of refocus your mind on the the things that really matter. You know, I'd say I could be doing better at that right now, but sure we're only warming up. I have actually thought about maybe seeing can I do slightly longer streams. Like I know um some of the other streamers do a bit more than two hours. Um, that depends on like the schedule of everyone else and stuff. I can't just say I want to do it. Like I'd have to ask and see where I can be, see where you can kind of slot in. But um, it's also down to time, like what time we can do it at. And actually, because usually I can kind of only do it late in the day, so. Obviously, I don't want to be up all night. Because like most, I need me sleep. Especially on a skill night.
just knows you. Grab the topology brush. That's thickness, is it? Yeah. Didn't want that. Just isolate that and delete the. Again, I've got like shortcut keys and stuff, so that's why sometimes there's stuff happening there that you may not necessarily understand. But like I said, I'm kind of trying to just focus on the sculpting for today's today's one. Usually, I would go into more detail, like I'll explain everything I'm doing as I go. And I mean, if you if you do want that, like any of the other any of the previous streams I've done are all still on the Pixlogic on Pixlogic's channel you can see them a lot of people actually do use them as like tutorial as a tutorial so um, feel free to check them out if uh, you're interested in that let's duplicate that Ghost of Christmas future saying both is great. Yeah, it's a hard balance to strike. Cause of course some people want to you know are beginners and they want to know how to do each little step that you're doing and other people are kind of more intermediate or whatever and kind of don't necessarily actually want to know. They already know what brush you're using or they already know what Z remesh is and stuff. Try to get somewhere in the middle. I'm gonna Z remesh this guy. This part. See, I've got the shapes in there, more or less. Like I've got some shapes in there, but it's too high. Um, and now I've got edge flow that works with that shape. So it's a bit of back and forth. It's like throwing water onto the clay. We're fine. Just using the diamond standard here again.
same bit. Just Damien Stanner just using it at a higher um, it is a bit bigger, so I can use that to actually make the shape. Mask lasso. S H snake hook. Gotta love that brush. I don't use it too often, but it's a great brush. Mara Kainer, I vote to rename Snake Hook to Ashley Adams Brush. Yeah. Yeah, she's a. Uh, the way she uses it is really interesting because, like, you can see there. I'll go back a second. You can see there, like, when the polys stretch. Like, she uses that. Which I'd have never even thought to do. Um. Like just I don't know, there's like a part of me that's just like, nah, it's not clean. Which you know, a lot of people say, Oh, I love that I love how clean your work is, but you know, sometimes um your your greatest attribute can become your biggest problem. I should make fucking bumper stickers. Um <clears throat> It's actually like a fighting thing, uh, like boxing and stuff. If you have um, a particular style or a particular uh, way you fight and you, um, you always do that and it's, it's your strength, it's what, it's, it's what you're best at can actually become a problem because once you get to like a high level your opponent is going to know you're going to do that and will be able to anticipate what you're doing so that's where that kind of comes from but um so it can become the reason that you actually end up losing but um in terms of like from an artistic point of view Like that, like I always try to stay clean, and it's something that's always stuck in my head. But um, but 
like it can cause it means there's certain there's certain things that can come from being more loose certain um, appeal that can come from that kind of workflow that uh, so like that's something that I could be I could I could benefit from if I just kind of focused a little bit like on that and tried to let go of that uh, need to be clean Hey Roman. Uh, Jimmy's asking how to avoid wobbliness. Yeah, it's um a lot to do with keeping your meshes low poly where you can. Um, I want to do something with this. Maybe close it off. I don't know. Um, a lot to do with keeping your stuff low poly and um, when you get your big shapes in at your lower subdivisions. And then when you want to do your details, then you can go up in, and you can see there, I'm dropping down the poly count when I'm making this move. So I don't get, because otherwise I'm only moving bits and bobs and you end up getting lumps because it's too high, it's too dense. Uh, I use inflate to make the horns thicker. Yeah, I have it down here, but it's in the deformation menu here. But I have it on my UI because I use it all the time. Flip it. Increase. <laughs> I sound like Gordon Ramsay now. Done. feel about this big brow thing. It's not sitting the way I want. That 
that's more of the pause. It's going to bother me, so let's just tilt it forward. Sorry guys if I'm missing any of your messages. I feel bad, I always try to keep on top of all of them, but I have noticed that um <clears throat> from doing that it's severely not to say like I enjoy doing that. Um it's the reason I like streaming is chatting with everyone. But um Like with the pumpkin, for example, I didn't get enough of that. I didn't feel like I got enough of that done during the stream. There was a lot of it that I did after. And I thought every now and again it would be nice to just um, get stuck into the sculpt so you guys can actually see a bit more. Rather than me just yapping. Panther or something. Alright, let's get some more of these jaws too long. This is where if I was doing this on my own I'd probably be looking up some uh, reference right now. Figure out exactly how to place that jaw nicely. There's one thing I've learned is never take animal anatomy for granted. Darko knows what I'm talking about. Do you usually sculpt in mid subdivisions or only the lowest and highest? Yeah, mid. I kind of, you know, you've got. If you've got five subdivisions, just use them as you see fit, as you need them. Like if I want to move a big chunk of that there, like I don't necessarily need to go all the way to the bottom, but sometimes I do. If I need to, like there you see, you just smoothing back the, the brow, like completely changing that form, so I went all the way to the lowest subdivision. This is um, has a famously long tongue. Not what I'm looking for. See if we mesh that again.
So I'm just pulling it out and then zero meshing again. It gives me more loops there. I can keep turning it. just there I'm using smooth and then lift while I'm still pressing to get the alternate smooth you can see there when I pull stuff out and do all this janky stuff and then I alt smooth you can see what happens clean corpse but it doesn't work if your topology is too high Symmetrical. So just the angle. Turn perspective off. Says you. That's fine. See, I'm moving there, but it's too high, poly. I need to pull that back down. Yeah, you can use the bend arc, but I don't really. I prefer masking it. I don't. I actually don't think it's quicker. But I mean, if you prefer to use it, then absolutely. No wrong way to get the job done. Just using the clay build up. this because this curve is going across it I kind of want to flow out of it <laughs> the pen scratching is so ASMR yeah I think 
I don't know because this is an older Cintiq because I have I have the newer one that well I have one of the newer ones the Pro but has the buttons down the side of it I don't know is it the screen or the nib I've changed the nib but I always get that that sound I don't know is it the screen but if it's ASMR that sounds like a good thing right who doesn't love a bit of ASMR? Tell you what, select you. As you can see there, I just use spheres all the time. Did I just duplicate that? I think I did. Um, Maybe not. Because I'm not looking, I don't really, I'm not looking for it to, you know, if even in arm is a cylinder, I'll still use a sphere. Because I'm just going to shape it anyway. I don't really care what the initial shape is. I'm going to push and pull it all over the place. So I always just go. I don't think about it too much, just grab a sphere, throw it in, start working on it. Is it the wind we hear behind you? Oh no, no, that is the, well, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I don't think so. I don't think so. Is another mesh there. Let's delete you. Let's make sure it's on its own. My heart always stops a little bit when I hit the delete button. So many times I got caught out deleting the wrong thing. I don't know what this is, but we're just putting it in there. It's a skin flap. Flap O skin. I think it needs teeth. It's going to make all the difference, really, isn't it? Do you know what? Actually, you could be hearing. You could be hearing my dog. My dog is like sleeps under my desk. Oh, Boomer. Yeah, like a marker. That's what. Yeah. So here's the trick, turn off symmetry, zero mesh, and it'll spread that out between the two. Didn't make much of a difference, but it'll do. Now I don't even know what size I want these teeth to be. Just turn on, yeah, let's leave that for now. on the move that's what the tap dancing is oh that's fun
not going to worry too much about these teeth for now. I just want to get a feel for where they want to be. Again, this is something that I'd go get reference for and see the different teeth in animals. But I know one thing. Oh, turn local symmetry off. I want this to kind of flow down through here into the teeth, come to a bit of a point. Hey, chicken hawk. Cheers, Bob. Alex, how are you, chicken? Alex is Krampus, yeah. Or Krampus. Which is it? It is Krampus, right? That's what I've been typing anyway. Attention, like, is he gonna move that tongue? I'm moving it. Maybe I need to open that jaw more. down too bad thanks ever don't know 
is there a way or an easy way you can try like ask Seabrush on Twitter? Which question are you answering there now? Maybe change the resolution in Dynamesh. Um, right here. So you got Dynamesh, and here's the resolution. I feel like that was a test. <laughs> If you mean Z remesh, how am I doing that? I'm using Z remesh here, not Dynamesh, and I have it in the shortcut. See, it's there. See it changing. Um, that's the target body count. So I'm changing that up here. I have a, sh a keyboard shortcut for sh keyboard shortcut for this one. All right, let's keep it kicking. So I'm doing this and I'm kind of imagining some areas that will be blended together. I'm imagining the final look. See, that's getting lumpy where, but that's okay. Don't mind that for now. I'm not even sure if I want to keep this one super clean or not. Give him a neck. Why does he not have a neck? Um, just seeing that there, ask Paul again. Yeah, shoot the message again there and I'll keep an eye out for it. Do you mean... Okay, I see one up there. Oh, how do you fix symmetry on rotated and offset objects? Example, head with separate guns, eyes. Should one separate it from the posed body, finish the head, sculpt, pose it back? Here's just an example, but just use an example. Okay, hold on now. How do you fix symmetry on rotated and offset objects? Um, if you've got multiple objects, then that makes it more difficult. <clears throat> like this guy, for example, if a bunch of them are off, then yeah, you kind of, what you can do is you can, if your whole sculpt is way off, 
the center of the world. Um, you can bring it into T pose mesh, or you can just use this, which stacks them all together. So you can move everything, every sub tool, turn symmetry off and snap it all to the home. So center the pivot, then snap everything home. And then if things are offset and rotated and stuff, you have to manually try get them back to something that's that looks symmetrical. And then you can just hit, um, if you go down to geometry, modify topology and mirror and weld, and it will copy to the other side and weld everything together. It is a bit of work. There's, some, there's gonna be clean up there. So it's, it's something you want to try and avoid. I'll go back into T pose for a second, and just push and pull some stuff around. Let's get rid of that tongue for a sec. It's starting to look like a gargoyle. Okay, let's just do that. No problem. Thanks, uh, Mark Hainer. I would have missed that question otherwise. I can't play it, but I guess I can tell you is what I'm actually, I'm listening to like an uh, instrumental of a, of a song from um, Nightmare Before Christmas felt apt. Used to be like, when I was a kid, it was probably actually my favorite film as a kid. I know that's really, <laughs> a lot of people that say that. I used to watch that film constantly and uh, I'm letting that loop with uh, the theme song from 28 Days Later with my man Killian Murphy in it best zombie film ever big Damien standard here and see what if I do that
think you'd ever make a gumroll tutorial on sculpting stylized characters. Yeah. Um, it's definitely on my list of things to do. I literally just haven't gotten around to it in terms of like time. Because obviously creating it, you know, if I'm going to create a tutorial, I want it to be something, something good, something useful. I don't want to just make a tutorial for the sake of it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something I'd like to do, all right. Uh, a good few people have asked me about it, so... Seems enough people are interested, it's definitely worth my while. What's the difference between Maya and ZBrush? Um, Maya is a pipeline tool. Um, it's not just for modeling, it's for rigging, animation, lighting, everything. Um, I mean, I guess you could technically say you can sculpt in it because technically there's what is called sculpting brushes in it, but like if you compare it to some to ZBrush, which is, you know, uh, software specifically designed just for sculpting, like it's it's not even in the same way class. Um, if you want to sculpt, ZBrush is the way to go. In my opinion. Um, But uh, Maya, I use Maya all the time too. It's it's it's, but it's a different function. I use it for different things. But uh, you can, it's more like in terms of a modeler, you box model and stuff like that. And it ZBrush is, um, a much more kind of free flowing, sculpting, tool. I mean, it's got other functions in there too. You know, your fiber mesh, and you can do poly paint and stuff like that. But uh, that's that's kind of, you know, if you were to ask someone what ZBrush for, in one word, sculpting. make a tutorial to get some practice under your belt for when you have a great idea for a big one uh, yeah I mean yeah I guess I guess that's true um, like I don't want to just make a tutorial on anything either I don't know like if I don't have a good idea for a tutorial and like I, I would like I could do a tutorial for sure on like you know like a good workflow for um uh, creating stylized characters um, seems to be what a lot of people are looking for and uh, I mean I could do that but uh, yeah in terms of just making any random tutorial like it if, if if it doesn't feel like a good idea like if it doesn't feel like oh yeah that's that would be cool or that would be useful then I don't have the, the motivation then isn't there you know because there's a lot of other things I could be doing. Like like I said, a lot of people actually use the streams, like their tutorials. Um, so that kind of, kind of, that's kind of scratching that itch. I, I, I do prefer, I prefer, like I am, um, I am, going to be doing more mentoring uh, and I don't I wouldn't I, I enjoy that more I think I enjoy like live and working with people 
and um, I think it's also more beneficial for the person for the artist that wants to do it um, it's my dog can you hear him I don't know if he's gonna hear that my dog is dreaming he's like little barks I mean, I'm throwing in teeth here, but they're more, they're almost placeholders. Because I think for this, you really need to go in and sculpt them some gnarly teeth. and horn um, it's hard to read your name Gra tree it's the blue and um, yeah I drew the concept yeah although feel like I need to say like it was a rush job Thanks, Alex. I mean, I guess it's definitely not one of my better drawings, but like I said, I just wanted to have something there. I didn't want to, like, you know, it's it's fun. Like sometimes, for sure, you can just like sculpt the design on the fly. Like Ashley does that a lot. Uh, she's probably a lot more used to it than I am. Especially the fact that she's doing it in the streams and stuff all the time as well. And I guess, I mean, that's how she concepts for work too. 
Uh, so she's, you know, I think it's safe to say she's a lot better at just sculpting a concept than I would be. Because you, like, when I concept, I always do it by sketching. Like, I'll do a certain, I'll do a certain amount of um, the concepting. Like you can see here, like I'm, I'm like the. Um, I can move away from the concept at the sculpting stage, but I prefer, I like to have, I always have a, a sketch to start from. Yeah. trying there messing
trying to at least get this angle kind of looking kind of decent. <clears throat> um, but really, like I'd like to get something something nice for the an area here where the horns kind of plug into. Walk out around the back of his head and his neck a little bit. Uh, Alex, yeah, I have gone, yeah, I'm going much more detailed than on the previous scopes that I've done on the channel. But I like to do that sometimes. Get bored of doing the same thing all the time. So I tend to switch it up sometimes. But uh, yeah, as it like I said, like at the beginning, I wasn't sure if I was gonna go realistic or like a little bit more realistic or a little bit more stylized. So this is, I would say actually this is somewhere kind of in between still. But yeah. There's Gav, El Goddles, and brother from another mother. Gavin, Gavin's on the Discord as well with me. If any of you, any of you guys are in there, one of the boys. Um, Gav's a map painter and an absolutely fantastic one at that. We used to do a lot of streams together. We need to get back onto Gav. We need to get back onto that. RPG lounge buzz me you and Rory do some streaming again a couple of beers talk about conspiracy theories a couple of guys I think la two weeks ago on the last stream I think it was uh, there's a couple of people writing in on the chat here saying how much they missed those streams I mean we owe it to the fans Gav going on in here a little bit do you know what before we do that I broke the symmetry but we're, not, we're just going to pretend that didn't happen on this so we're going to hide everything duplicate it zero mesh it with symmetry on um, yeah, we definitely need to. Even if we did it every now and again, <clears throat> once a month, you know what I mean. Start, start small. Um, I'm like I'm potato drawing in two D. Let's add another dimension. <laughs> yeah. It actually like I I find. Like you could definitely argue, all right, well, you're adding another dimension, so it must be harder. But it kind of depends on how your brain works. I think, I don't know. Sometimes, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes there's certain things I find hard to get it right in two D that I can do it no problem in three D. <laughs> yeah, the symmetry break, I just meant the wrinkles on the forehead. But actually, it's doing it anyway, so. One more. Sure. 
Okay, that's funny. That Lou is for new. So we don't need Mew anymore. So, with these kind of farms, like I'm still the same way I am when I bake that, when I make those base shapes, still thinking of like moving with the flow of those shapes, keeping the flow between everything as much as I can. If it doesn't flow, then try to get rid of it. sculpt some forms some volumes that I can just all smooth back and um Alex is saying they're so clean lines like Something to remember when you're sculpting is not to be too mechanical. It's not to be mechanical at all. A lot of people go from modeling to sculpting. And the problem can be where modeling is very mechanical. 
skill um, but it's n it's not something you want to carry across into your sculpting as being mechanical and you want to be very like if anyone has done and I know I've said this a bunch of times you're probably sick of hearing it but um, life drawn and like drawn from your your shoulder not your wrist Letting some of those lines be deep and smoothing some of them. Just get some variation in there. In depth. But uh, be you know be keep your hand kind of loose, your shoulder loose. So it can be important. Like you know, I guess if you're starting, then it's fine. You know, you're kind of just learning. You do what you can in terms of like your graphics tablet. The large, I find a large intuous is actually a bit awkward because of the relationship between the size of that and the size of your screen. It depends though, some people like it. Um, that one I found awkward, but I would say try to go, like if you're getting an intuous, don't get a small one, get a medium sized one um, to allow your hand to, to like move. Don't be stuck moving with your fingers like this, you know. Um, if you can. But that said, like if you are, it's not going to mean you can't do really nice scopes. It just means it's just a, a little bit better to have a good size. Like I'm using the 22 inch Cintiq, which is a nice size. Because obviously you also has, have to think about like how much space do you have in your desk too. Right, let's dynamesh some stuff here. Although, before I do that, I wouldn't mind a little bit. Figuring out what I'm doing with this. So I'm thinking like this volume here could be like a big gland that comes out of the neck there. And like this could be just like a muscle. Brush. Sorry, I kind of forgot about using or saying what brushes I'm using. I'm using the, but you can tell, like, I haven't used any different brushes here. I've been using the, the Move, the Damien Standard, and a, a tiny bit of the H polish. But ninety percent of this has been done with the Move and the H and the Damien Standard. Sure, this is sitting the way I want it to sit. 
it before I commit it to some subdivisions on them didn't I just subdivide this Hairy Mandibles, what a name, love it. Um, hey Paul, I heard you say something about doing mentorships, is that something you do on the side? It's something I've only started doing, them. well, I've done them before, but um, I did them, I've done them with companies, with, with schools, um, in a mentorship program type of thing. Um, but recently I started doing them I started doing it on my own, um, but I want to reconfigure how I do that. Um, so it's in the works. I want to kind of reconfigure a little bit um, how I go about doing the the mentorship. But yeah, it's something that I'm... If I... I'll 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 post more on um hopefully soon enough. Um I don't I was saying earlier, um particularly busy at the moment on this in here. Um let's go up a bit higher here because I don't want to do this too low. Yeah, so I'm I'll I'll be posting about it at some stage. Um how I'd like to continue with the mentorship thing um, it's going to take a little bit of working out um, but yeah it's something I'll be doing yeah. you have to worry about a lot of things when doing traditional modeling this eventually gets this eventually gets mind numbing if you're not used to the process and can stifle your creative freedom and development um yeah i mean yeah if you're trying to box model a character it's definitely tricky that's you really need to you really you can't concept that way like it's too slow you, you really need some good 2d and it can be a nice process so a lot of people do actually enjoy doing it that way but yeah in terms of like creative freedom and as you said, creative freedom and development, yeah, it's because it just by nature because it's a slow process, you can't, you know, play around with ideas and stuff like you can with something like sculpting. Yeah, so I'm just zero meshing that duplicate, um, adding a couple of subdivisions now and just projecting the Dynamesh sculpt into this so it'll give me the, the whole piece as one and I'll have subdivisions um, 
awesome where can we look to see updates about that probably instagram is usually where i put that kind of thing um and on my discord as well i'll put some news in there when i when i figure it out um and actually i'll put and i'll put it on my art station i'll have like a blog there uh, about uh, streams and stuff and I'll, I'll add the internship or the yeah I'll add that stuff in there sorry the mentorship yeah uh, can you give me links to, the, to follow you on social media art station uh, yeah oh this is done Um. yeah two seconds put it in the chat it's the link tree so that's that link there is all the different social media stuff it's all in there Right, so we don't need this topping anymore. How are we doing on time? Cool. So just go up the subdivisions one by one. surprised I don't completely hate this sculpt considering the lack of uh, prep I did in it quick sketch and that was pretty much it Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks for joining in. All the best. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, it's coming along. Not too bad, I guess. I still say it's a long way from finished, but... How can I make brush without using any alpha? If you hold space, it's usually on the default UI, the alpha will be over here, but you can also hold space, which is why I don't have it here, because they're all here. Um, and you can change, see there? Just under the actual brush, you can change the alpha here, you can turn it off. So you can just turn the alpha off. Uh, glad you didn't hate this one sometimes i feel like the art begins to tell you or begins to tell me what it wants yeah yeah totally just let it kind of just keep working into it and let it figure itself out almost let it be what it's gonna be So 
So similar, I guess, to, you know, that, um, I don't know, I can't remember what it's called, it's like blind writing, where you just put a pen to a page and just start writing, like, bleh, just whatever comes out, and mightn't even be sentences at first, and after a while, maybe a couple of sentences, and just see what happens. sculpting Just use the H polish again here and just go on Alt with that, which fills rather than rather than polishes flat, fills it. a bigger shape so I need to go down a little bit in the subdivisions. This big bit here is giving me like Swamp Thing vibes. Not that I'm complaining. Oh, oh that's an interesting question. Like, uh, so how did I get my first job? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and assume you mean in the animation industry. Um, So my first job, um, I was actually, well, I guess, I don't know, like, I, I always hear, like, in, you know, people who live in America seem to get jobs, like, when they're in their 20s, like, super early 20s, or even before their 20s and stuff, like, I don't know, there's only a few studios in Ireland, um, and I wasn't really in a position to move, necessarily, didn't have money for one, um, and yeah there's a hand there's only yeah like i said there's only a handful of studios so when i was younger i had applied to a bunch of studios as a 2d artist and to be honest never even heard back from them. i don't even know if they seen my application uh because obviously with only a couple of uh studios and a bunch of students and such i mean uh, I'm not even I mean they could have seen it and just not not like the work but um I, I'm not even sure that they actually ever seen the applications that I was across the different studios but um regardless anyway whether they did or didn't they didn't uh, get back to me so um at that stage I was still doing 2D and eventually got into 3D and I was actually only doing um, I did some like box modeling and stuff in college couldn't remember any of it um, at this point and so I'm just using the standard brush here so it's a bit out of the usual um, didn't remember any of that um, 
and started to learn zebrush. A friend of mine was a friend of mine uh, started or told me, kept telling me, you should try zebrush, try zebrush, you'd love it. Um, and I kept kind of putting it off because I was really adamant that no, I want to be a two D artist, and um, I was mainly just like drawing and painting in Photoshop and doing like illustration kind of slash kind of concept art you know the typical no idea what i really wanted to do within 2d i just knew i wanted to draw cool pictures Um. so i um but i got i gave zebrush a try and immediately fell in love with it uh just like i'd still draw and i still do draw now but obviously uh but um I started to sculpt like almost exclusively immediately and um, I think seven months I think it was after I first started to use ZBrush um, I got my first job as a 3D character modeler so um, but you know it's just because like I knew anatomy i knew shape language and you know the, the fundamental stuff from drawn so once i started with um once i started with zbrush like all that stuff just carried straight across so once i kind of figured out the software it was wasn't too it wasn't too uh difficult to start making like at least decent characters um and so i it was actually an old teacher of mine from college had told me that a studio was hiring um and i thought yeah well they're not even gonna look at my portfolio um but he was like but you know i'm not gonna say no i won't apply so i of course applied sent along with my cv with that was basically completely useless there was no i had no experience no freelance anything so i was like they're not they're not even gonna look at me and uh but sure enough i got an interview and um they gave me a three-month contract which was essentially to say like i'll give you three months see if you're any good and um i did i did pretty well i think well they they kept me so um seems to do pretty well and uh yeah that's how i got my first job i feel like i haven't been looking at the concept enough so there you go I guess it's alright for two hours um, I mean it could be just any old monster what I wanted to do was you can see there like I wonder do you reckon we have time I don't know I This already feels like a mistake. <laughs> um, dystopia, yeah. So the yeah, I the brush thing is just a lot of people have asked me that. I really don't want to have to add the brush thing because it's a massive button. It just takes up a big chunk, and 
like no matter where I add it, it will immediately take like an inch off my canvas. Um, but I have been like to begin with, I was, I know I kind of lost the train of thought after a while, but to begin with, I was kind of saying what brushes I was using. Um, but the thing is, I'm, I'm almost reluctant to do it because I feel like, well, I don't know, I guess it would show like that I'm actually just using like the super basic brushes. But like Move and Damien Standard was used for 99% of this. Uh, snake Hook for like the teeth and the horns. Um, not the tongue really, although I did pull it out initially with Snake Hook. Um, and yeah, that's kind of that's kind of it. Bit of page polish. And uh, that's it. Don't use any fancy brushes. There's no like fancy alphas I'm using. Just the basics. People keep asking me, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up having to at some stage, I guess. We keep asking me about seeing what brush I'm using. I just, I, I, I like even this like i used to for a while i used to actually use a ui where there was nothing on the top and bottom it was just the side here and i had shortcut keys for everything um, and i was using that for a long time and i was in work and people would come over like my lead at the time or whatever come over and they'd want to move stuff around and they'd be just the ui is completely empty because i just like to have as much canvas space as possible I hate having a busy UI. So the idea would be, which I'm not going to have time to do now, we've got like a minute, no, I'm a minute over, um, to add this like fluffy thing around them. Um, and then I could use some dynamic cloth and drape it down. I probably need to do a bit more of the body to give the cloth something to do it on and uh, yeah so I'll finish this I'll finish this probably in the next couple of days or so maybe over the weekend depends on how busy I get could be could be next week to be honest if, I, if it gets too busy but um, if I get too busy but uh, yeah you get the idea let's just hide that and pretend we didn't do that I think it will actually look cool in the end, but there he is. At least the beginning of our Krampus. Hope you guys like him. So we'll wrap it up there. I'm hemming and hawing about whether to do this <clears throat> two weeks. Maybe I will. I'll leave it until then so you can see me finish it. But, um, the shape definitely an amazing way to fold. It's too prominent, perhaps. Tone of dominant shapes so all of the eye around the zigomatic tone. Oh, look at you, Alex. Um, yeah, that's that could be true. Well, I'm gonna sculpt into it anyway and see what else I can do with it. So, um, I shall leave it there before I get in trouble for staying on too late. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for joining in, and again in same time in two weeks. And uh, hopefully see you at the next stream. All right, guys. Have a good one.